Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. Today is another gameplay I filmed at MTG Philly. It was great getting games in with a wide variety of commanders that I don't normally see in my local meta. And it definitely made me want to try out some of these commanders featured today. Also, have you heard the news? Your favorite CDH YouTube channel has released some cool merch. And if you're interested in picking up some sweet new apparel, come check us out. Also, if you like what you see, consider joining our Patreon, as with your help, we can keep producing the videos you enjoy. And if you want to play with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community that loves to talk MTG or whatever else strikes our fancy. And we would love to meet new people. All right, block there, kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting us off is Hidden Planet X playing Shorakai Genesis Engine. This is a humility control deck, as Shorkai is not a creature, and can win through humility, unlike a majority of other commanders. With another benefit coming as an outlet for Isochron Dramatic Scepter. Since this commander doesn't require either haste or a turn to wait. Next up is Ross playing Gaunti, Lord of Luxuries. This is a mono black Bolas' Citadel combo list. It's a slower combo that aims to use Bolas' Citadel, Aetherflux Reservoir, and Sensei's Divining Top to generate infinite storm and life to shoot your opponents down. Relying on a sub package of reanimation and other cool effects to turn Gandhi's ability to steal spells off the top to gain card advantage while hopefully snagging win cons from their opponents. In the third spot is Kinnon. This is a proactive mid range deck that aims to utilize Kinnon's ability to generate lots of mana and then funnel that into large payoffs. This list seeks to establish infinite mana with combos like Isochron Scepter or Basalt Monolith, and use Kinnon or Thrasios to draw out the deck and win through Thassus. And bringing up the rear, we have Steve on Paco Heldon. This partner pairing can generate a huge amount of card advantage right out of the command zone. The deck strategy is to go all in in casting and protecting Paco, then using Paco to grind out the mid game and then Holden to smother your opponents in card advantage in the late game. Often it wins by infinitely recurring extra turn spells. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Hidden starts off by cracking a polluted delta for a tundra. He goes searching and to save on time, cast a mox opal and passes. Ross has a quick turn just playing a command tower. Kinnon shocks in a breeding pool and casts a mystic remora. He then proceeds to dump his hand, casting a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Noxious Revival, and following that up with a Mox Amber. Steve also has a Command Tower and casts a Turn 1 Monkey. Hidden has a Command Tower as well and passes. Ross has a Snow Covered Swamp and suspends a Profane Tutor. Go ahead. Why are you not playing nothing? Suspending? Yeah. Come on, that's not casting. I mean, you can just keep your fish along. I will keep, for that I'll keep the fish. Yeah. Kinnon pays for his fish and plays his third mox of the game. This one being a very pretty mox opal. He plays and cracks a prismatic vista for an island. And casts Kinnon for two. And then for two more, he also casts an Asimic Signet. Steve has an exotic orchard as land and has to combat. He sends Ragavan at Kitten, who takes a hit and exiles a Consecrated Sphinx off the top of his library. And oh boy, was that something Kitten was looking for. But Steve gets his treasure and on his second main casts a Bloom Tender. Hidden plays a Windswept Heath as land and cracks it for a Plains. He shortcuts and casts a Graft Digger's Cage. He does give a card to Kitten, although it's worth it to slow Kitten down. Ross untaps and removes a Suspend Counter. He has another snow covered swamp and casts a groom tutor. He gives a card to Kinnon and passes as he searches. Kinnon pays for his fish and plays a command tower as land. Two mana then gets him a sylvan and he follows it up with a marrow leaf pixie. Steve untaps and plays best boy Paco. He moves to combat and sends the monkey at hidden with Paco heading at Kinnon. This triggers Paco to exile the top card off everyone's library. He exiles three non-creatures and both players take the hit, with Raghavan exiling a Marsh Flats from Hidden. Hidden has a City of Brass and takes one to cast a Blind Obedience. 
He gives a card to Kitten and follows up with a Gilded Drake. Although Steve wants his doggo and responds with a force of will, exiling a Snapcaster Mage and giving a card to Kitten. Ross untaps and profane tutors. Kitten draws another card and Ross finds another card to hand. Win? Huh? Win stuff? No. No, he's, he's a ball of Citadel deck, so he's a little slower. But it's a second tutor. It's a second tutor. Yeah. So it's like that's a, that, that's worrisome. Is it the second tutor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he yeah. grimmed. Oh yeah, he grimmed too. Yeah. Nah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Two tutors in a row bad. equals bad news. No idea what you're talking about. He's like, no idea what you're talking about. Where are we? What is this stuff in front of me? We're in a building? I thought we were outside in a tent. He plays the swamp and casts a sensei's divining top. Kinnon draws and Ross finishes his turn with a pawn of Ulamog. With Kinnon at his end step, intuitioning. He finds a drift of phantasms, moon silver key, and a transmute artifact. With him giving him the drift. Kinnon still pays for his fish and activates his sylvan library, taking 8 to keep the 2 extra cards. On his first main, he transmutes his phantasm to find a basalt monolith, which he then casts with the artifact entering tap due to the blind obedience. Although Kinnon still has a bunch of mana and pays the three to untap it. He then presents a loop of infinite colorless mana as he can tap the monolith for four mana and use three of it to untap itself. He then follows this with a mirage mirror, which lets him infinitely activate the mirror to swap between a land and the monolith for infinite colored mana. But he still needs a way of removing the graph digger's cage so he can use Kinnon. He then casts a Worldly Tutor and puts a Spellseeker on top. He doesn't have a way of drawing cards unfortunately and actually missed the line as he could have had the last trigger of his mirror become a copy of the top. This would have let him draw the Spellseeker and go off. Instead he decides to empty his hand. He lays down a Soul Ring, Mana Vault and a Lotus Petal, ending his turn with a Lano or Elves. Steve has a City of Brass and heads to combat. He sends the monkey at Hidden and Paco back at Kinnon. Everyone exiles the top card with Paco gaining two counters and more importantly exiling the Spellseeker from Kinnon. Kinnon then chumps the doggo and Hidden exiles a Talisman of Progress from the Ragavan. On a second main, Steve casts a Temporal Manipulation, giving a card to Kinnon but resolving nevertheless. And Steve then ends his turn playing Halden. Steve then moves to his extra turn and casts a Winged Boots. He gives a card to Kinnon and then equips Paco with the boots. He plays an exiled Scalding Tarnas land and an exiled Portable Hole. He gives another card to Kinnon, although that's the last one as he O-rings the fish. He then casts a Lotus Petal and a Soul Ring, cracking the Tarn to grab a Tropical Island before heading to combat. The monkey heads back at Hidden, with Paco heading at Kinnon. He then exiles four non-creatures, making Paco a 12-12, with both players taking the hit, and Hidden exiling a March of Swirling Mist off the top. On his second main, Steve pays two life to get pro Kinnon. He looks at his hand and follows this up with an Explorer, playing an island as his second land drop, and then an exiled Beseech the Queen, ending his turn as he searches out a Mana Drain. Hidden actually untaps and just casts Shorakai. Ross follows Hidden's lead by untapping and casting his commander, Gonti. He resolves and on ETB exiles one of the top four of Steve's library, with Ross ending his turn sending his pawn at Steve, although the pawn just bounces off Halden. The one four? Sounds good. Oh, uh, boom. Go ahead. It's just there to be there. Okay, I was like, what is the trick? Yeah. <laughs> What's the trick? Kinnon untaps and Sylvans. He drops the one to keep the extra two cards and on his first main makes infinite mana again. He then casts a Fabricate and while he goes searching, Hidden helps him out as now with the Shorakai, he can make his mirror a Shorakai and loop it with Basalt to draw his deck out and then armed with an army of pilots, cast a Thassa's Oracle. And with his grip full of counters, the table scoops it up. Game review, man, I wish there were even more magic events like Philly. This game was a blast, although after seeing the game, I realized I should have mulliganed my opening hand, 
as the mox opal was a trap, and my hand was just too slow for the table, especially when Kinnon barfs his hand turn one. But to be honest, I thought Paco was going to take it. He just needed one more point of damage to take Kinnon out, and with his extra turn, I thought it was game over. As for Ross, turns out he just needed one more land to go off, as double tutoring generally should win you the game. But thanks to everyone that played, and I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to let you know that we have a TCG affiliate link. And if you ever see a card you want to try, or are inspired to brew something new, use our link when purchasing and we'll receive a small portion of the sale. This is a great way to support the channel, and if you enjoyed the gameplay, please leave a like and subscribe, as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.